Hi there, everybody. Now, if you're able to hear me. Great. Uh, and let me look for Mary Joyce. Are you online here? I'm here. Hello, Scott. Hello, everyone. You're there. Great. Um, welcome, everybody. We'll, we'll welcome you because that's what's important. And then we'll start out with lots of fun. Mary Joyce. Hello, welcome everybody. It's great to see you and I, we appreciate all your time that you put into APWA and your leadership. And I know we wish we could be in Kansas City right now celebrating Kansas City Chiefs back to back going to Super Bowl, but hopefully we can do that when it's safe and the time is ready. So we appreciate you being here and sorry about those Packers. So we'll see what happens in Super Bowl. And we hope we all have a super chapter leadership training this week. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. Um, rather than having you fly in and, and, and have to be with a lot of people and have so much fun in person, we decided that we'd have you in little squares on lot, lots of screens. Uh, I think a lot of you are used to this mode of meeting and, and it's working. Uh, we, we wanted to kind of push the envelope and make it as interactive as possible today. Uh, ra rather than really lecture at you, uh, we, we, we will share with you some of what's happening at APWA, but want, want to start it off with some polls, which uh, may work or may not work, but if it works, it's fun. Uh, and then also we've got prizes too. So let's get started with the first poll. And it should pop up on your screen at some point. And then we will see that poll. And then here's the poll. Uh, the question, first one is, have you collaborated with a chapter outside of your region? You can answer yes or no. And then once the poll closes, it, it will disappear. And, uh, and then after we have everybody's responses, Tammy or Ashley will then bring it back up and show us what our survey says. Okay, so have you collaborated with a chapter outside of your region? 39% say yes, 61% say no. And I'm sure when, once we're in breakout rooms, you can speak about what, what those experiences are like and what the value is. The next poll. <laughs> Mary Joyce. How many happy hours have you hosted virtually since COVID-19 started? I know I had the opportunity in Oktoberfest with Nevada and my own Region 8, so um, hopefully you can answer that and we're seeing some comments coming in, Ashley and Tammy and Scott, that people aren't seeing the poll. Um, let's see uh, all right, well, what, what happens is um, once you respond and hit submit, it disappears and then does everybody see the re results right now? Um, Put, put in the chat room if you don't see it. I see Kristen has no poll, uh, but it seems like a lot, lot of others have them. Uh, okay, good. So 90% have had between one and five. Who That's is that 1% with 20 of them? How can you even accomplish your work? At least you're having fun. That's great. Okay, next poll. How many legislative action alerts have you responded to over the last year? And if you don't know what they are, we'll speak about them later. It's easy to do. You gotta try it once and then you know how easy it is to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm also seeing that um, not, not everybody is seeing it. It might be the settings on your end um, technology is great, but it's not perfect. Okay, and the response was 69% of those who responded, and 
I think at least four people have responded, uh, have, have answered at least one. Thanks. That's great. Okay, the next one. And this could be our last one. How many PWX at home events have you attended so far? Okay, and our survey says, game show host, right? Zero should be definitely an option. We don't want zero as an option. It means you're, you're not utilizing what we're, we're offering. So none is not an option. And, and after today's meeting, you, you will not want to choose none. Uh, how, how many? 83% said between one and three, 12% said between four and six. Um, I, should okay. have, I should have led that, that you can count if you watched it on the members library after it was done too, it counts. Okay, so Rand, Randy stated that um, zero should be an option since he's a new director in the region. Um, well, you, you're well on your way to lear learning about all of what we have you know, to offer today. So with, with that, I'm going to share my screen and call up some PowerPoint slides. For those, those of you who may not, and I'm sure all, all of you have used Zoom, uh, when I share slides, it might create a film strip, so, so you won't see everybody on one screen at once, but I will launch this. And can everybody see my slides? Nod if you can. Okay, uh, so we're gonna get started. It's always great starting out with prizes. Um, nor normally when we're in person, our president and I would be down on the floor walking around the, the audience so that we can make this experience as interactive as possible. And we have had uh, some short history of giving out prizes for the right answers. Uh, you should have all received an email that spoke about um, homework and that was an animated video. So if you watch that, you should be able to answer the following questions that Mary Joyce and I will ask um, and, and here's how we'll play it. And life is not fair, but whomever we hear from first, which means you may need to unmute and say, I've got the answer, and yell, yell out your name, we'll call on you. Um, if you get the right answer, then we'd like you to put your full name in the chat box with the question number. So we'll, we'll practice this, okay? I know it's a little complicated, but here, here we go. All right, let's have some fun. Mary Joyce, you wanna get started? Sure. How many board members are there? I have the answer. Yeah. All right, Bob. 18 is not correct. We're talking about the national board, not chapters. Like Oops. So what positions make up the executive committee? I have the oh. answer. Okay, Rick. The president, the past president, the president-elect, and the CEO. Good job. There you go. So if you'd write, write your name in there, that would be great. And 18 um, it is not an incorrect answer necessarily. Um, oh, that's right. We, we, we changed our bylaws and uh, the CEO is, is part of the board, but it's a non-voting member. So, so we'll give you credit for that. Okay. Yeah, please do since I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how many APWA an members are there? I have an answer. Okay. Shout out your name. Doug Singer, City of Eugene, Thanks. Oregon. Thank you. I can't see everybody. And what is that answer? Um, 35,000. Well, we, I that's, I that's have answer. inspirational. I have an answer. Okay. Wendy had it. I saw Wendy before the other voices. Thank you, Mary Joyce. <laughs> Wendy? 
Wendy, what's the answer? I think Wendy put it on the chat box. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I did. I put it in the chat box. Okay, what, what is it? Less than 30,000. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. we, we hover right around that. So that's a good answer. Put, put your name and question number in there. Next question, Mary Joyce. How many chapters are there? I have the answer. All right, Sean Henry had it. Wow, you're quick. <laughs> he had 63. So put your name in, Sean, you won. Way to go. <laughs> How, many? How many technical directors I have the answer. are there? Way to Who go. was that? Who just spoke? Who spoke? I didn't. I don't know. Who? I have the answer. Who was the first one that said they had the answer with their voice? Was that Bob? Yeah, Bob and Pete. I heard a voice, but it didn't sound like Pete. I saw Pete. Pete, was that right. you who spoke out? Bob, I think. Bob. I've been muted. Oh. Okay. Sorry, Pete. Bob beat you. He okay. Got and that's the right got answer. Right. It's five Sorry, people. <laughs> Here we go. How many regional directors are there? I have the answer. Okay. Go for it. Nine. Perfect. You want to put your name in the box? Okay. Yeah. Very good. So, so some of you actually watched the animated video, huh? Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. What does A Q O L F A me stand for? Oh. All right, Roby. Robbie. Roby. Yes, I know the answer. The answer to that is advance the quality of life for all. Ooh, good one. Uh, that was a tough one. Nice winner, one. winner. How many strategic goals are there? I have the answer. Okay. Four. That is correct. Put your name in there. Sorry to Shelly who, who populated it maybe first, but we, we need you to yell out the, your, your name and we'll call on you and then put it in there. Um, so Scott, that, can we call that a tie? Can we call that a tie? Because I heard it as it popped up. And I'll, I we, can give we an extra can call prize. That. Uh, we'll need to make more wool hats, though. But that's okay. Not the <laughs> we'll make more wool hats. Um, so that, that is not a problem. OK, so question nine. What are the strategic goals? I know the answer. OK. This is Roby. They are promote the value of public works. Be the voice of public works. Provide excellence in education and credentialing. Deliver an outstanding and valuable membership experience. Superb. Great, yeah. great comprehensive answer. That that's yes. an A rating. <laughs> you know, she knows. Um, value, voice, membership, education would have been enough, but that's an A plus. Uh, Mary Joyce. What do the government? Affairs Committee and CPWA do? I know. Wendy. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, they, they advocate on behalf of Public Works. Perfect. Great. Okay, last couple of questions. Get ready. Name just four of the 10 committees or council at the national level that are not technical committees. And this is a little tricky because it was in the video. They make a distinction. Who can do this? We may not need to make extra hats then. I know. All right, go All right, for Rick. it. Asset management, emergency management, engineering facilities and grounds, fleet, leadership, solid waste, transportation, utilities, public right away and water resources. So fabulous answer, but that's not the right answer. No, um, I think I have it's, a trick. Yeah. it's a trick. Um, yeah. which, which ones are not technical ones? So think, in, in part of the, end of the um, video, we, we show that small cities, rural communities, young professionals, international affairs committee, our, our awards program, program review committee. Um, so th those are 
some of the, the others and C4S, which is the Center for Sustainability. But we, we needed to throw in a trick question there. What is the purpose of the Council of Chapters? I have the... Enrico? No, I think I'm misdirected there. I was going to say uh, you're ending one mission, one vision, one community. Oh, I like that too. Yeah. So does and, anybody and know the purpose else? of the council? Can, purpose. You be, can you do two or you just one time? Uh, pro probably one. Okay, Since well, I will rescind my answer. Okay. <laughs> because we, <laughs> we actually have 200 and... 58 people online right now. I'm surprised we're not hearing from the delegates like Pete Adler. Right. Someone okay. else. <laughs> they're, they're ringers. Yes. That's why I'm a ringer. That's why I'm staying out. Exactly. Can you hear me? Not very well, but it, yeah. What, what's your answer? <laughs> you guys, the, the directors in the, in the chapters? Uh, I think it was the right answer. It's yeah. really, really echoey, but I think you know it. It is you said that that it's re really being the conduit between directors and the board. So put your name in the box. And the last and final question for today: What is Mary Joyce's favorite amusement park? Got it. <laughs> okay, what is it? Up oh. Disneyland. All yes. right, we, we got that, and, and April got it, and Wendy got it. Okay, <laughs> thanks Thank everybody. You. So now we, we will move in to things about Great. Anyway. So thank you everybody. So things to know about the APWA leadership, the governance of our association is with our 17 board of directors and our CEO, Scott Grayson. And our goal is to achieve our organization vision, mission, goals, and strategic outcomes for our strategic plan. And we look at our association and within the governing structure with our elected officials, as well as looking what we can do to advance the quality of life for all and support all our chapters. And next. And then as you learned on the video and the game, the strategic plan is it guides our development of all our programs at a three year period. And we are in our second three year strategic plan. And so it's, it's great to have that as our guiding factor with the training we're providing, our membership strategic plan, or um, what we're doing, providing our educational opportunities and supporting the chapters. It helps bring us all together with the focus for our one APWA. Thank you. And I'm sure all of you have seen this already and we've spoken about it. Um, th this is really our roadmap for uh, rollout of new products and services, engaging with, with all of you and creating a re really great experience. Um, so when, when we speak about value. It, it's really about making sure the public, you know, knows who you are and what the value of public works is to society. And our, our way of rolling that out is? With the um, National Public Works Week, which is in May. And it's about, it's about May 18th, 2021 this year. And I know we had a lot of fun last year figuring out how we could make it exciting virtual but in our city of Ventura. We had our 25 years of pancake breakfast and had to go virtually, so we made it fun. But it is an opportunity for our agencies and our community to get the proclamations from our elected officials and really tell our community what Public Works is all about. And we will be having our theme this year of Stronger Together. So we're looking forward to seeing um, how everybody celebrates that, that year and showing how we as essential workers and first responders are out there supporting our communities. So look quickly at this slide because for whatever reason, it leaves me. But that's first responders. Um, and we, we've really been promoting this concept, as you know, um, in, in a presidential directive right after 9-11, it was established uh, under Homeland that public works are 
first responders. So we speak about that a lot in Washington and when we meet with, with elected officials or, or agency heads, we explain that. And often they kind of look at us in a strange way and say, but I thought police and fire were that, why are you? So we, we've been really telling our story and that's helped a lot. Fallen heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Scott, as we know, we're all first responders, and it's great to see how everybody is using that symbol, whether flags or on their snow plows or in their community. So it's keep sharing your stories with that on social media. And then due to um, our fallen heroes, APWA established this site. We display it when we can be together at PWX, and it's available online. And it's just to memorialize and remember those who are always out there working for our communities. And sadly, I'm sure we lose some and especially with COVID, all our thoughts and prayers are with the families of our public works families who have been affected. So that's out there so we can recognize our hardworking um, public servants as public works heroes. Thank you. So let's move to awards. Yes. So each year we have our awards and recognitions and they are due March 1st. So we really encourage you to take the time to really nominate those great projects and those professionals of the year. It's exciting to share your story. I know I enjoy reading about your projects and learning from it and sharing that great information and really giving you recognition at your community as well. And the PACE Award is June, due June 1st with your chapter excellence. And we encourage you to submit that as well. The board already approved some minor criteria changes for the PACE Awards this year, recognizing that COVID is a challenge, but I know you're going to have some great examples of how you've been resilient and um, kept your chapter going. So please consider doing that. Thank you. And now we move to voice. Um, we, we really speak about, and some, some of you have heard us speak a lot about, tell your story. Um, you know, APWA as a whole serves as your voice um, in Congress, in the media, but uh, much more important than us speaking on your behalf is, is you speaking out. Um, and some of the activities we were in Washington when we could travel, um, we, we were all up on the hill a lot. We, we brought our board of directors in. Uh, we're at hearings and we, we hold briefings as part of um, U, U.S. House Caucus on Public Works and Infrastructure. And here's a picture of, we, we started a big cities, counties, public works director group and uh, we, we brought them and this is a picture of us meeting at the White House last year. We've all- right. and here, Yeah, the Public Works um, Infrastructure Caucus with Fitzpatrick and um, the co-chairs and so, and Titus, and we had a good drone discussion with them and it was great to see the technology and some of that was our drones were our urging technologies and working with the FCC and seeing how we can get it licensed and how we use it for emergency management. And it was great dialogue with Representative Weber from Texas. He was really interested. So it's really amazing what we do in public works, how our elected officials are very interested in how we can move our infrastructure forward and take care of it. Right, and, and we will have more online as well. What, what is nice is that for some of you who, who aren't able to make your way to Washington, this is a way to log in and watch what, what's happening here. Some, some of our experts speak. The reality is all of you are actually experts, whether, whether you know, know it or not. And we, we would love having you on a panel. But then we also have met members of Congress who come as well as Hill staff. And our last one was extremely interactive, which is um, what, one of the positives that have come out of being able to work online. And here the other part of our North American neighbors is our Canadian Public Works Association and very similar to uh, America too is looking at policies at Ottawa and they really have a strong asset management system so we get to share information with them as well. And then Scott in Ottawa here. Do you want to share that story? Oh. We'll move, move ahead okay. so that... Uh, so, education and credentialing. I'm sorry. 
Sorry. So education and credentialing, that's why we are a nonprofit, and it's great because we provide all that great education and credentialing programs and opportunities, and it also helps support you at your chapters with your technical committees and your education that you're offering as well, whether it's certifications or accreditation. There's a lot of products online and available to you to share with your chapter members. Exactly. So um, and as you know, we, we've had to unfortunately cancel our North American Snow Conference and then PWX and then one more North, North American Snow Conference. Um, our, our board has been very agile. Uh, we, we've had lots of meetings with, with them. They've approved um, different ways forward, different modified budgets. And, and what stems out of it then is our staff what was able to implement um, not, not a virtual meeting like most that run three days long and five hours per day, with, which is hard. We've spread it out over a year, as you know, and each month has uh, a different theme. And we, we've had lots and lots of people who have registered here. So if you haven't experienced any of it, which I saw in our poll, please look online afterwards and sign up. Mary Joyce. Great. And one of uh, my passions is maintenance and operations, the other side of public works that helps support what we do in the field. And we developed a task force to look at what are those opportunities and training and certifications that are needed to help strengthen our operations and maintenance positions so they can maintain what you design and build and um, construct. So we're excited to see that. And we're also partnering with LTAC in your local areas as well of really looking at what opportunities they have to share and then vice versa what we have to share with them. So next slide, Scott. So such as the operator training resources online. I know we had a challenge keeping some of our employees busy and productive when they couldn't come into the field at some time. So this was a great opportunity from them to learn online. So that's available. Then certifications, another great value of what we offer our members is fleet inspection stormwater, as well as the supervisory and management certification programs, which I think are great as well to help promoting our succession plans and professional development within our organizations and companies. And next is accreditation, another awesome program. It is a lot of work, but it is so beneficial and highly recommended and worthwhile to really compare yourself to other agencies and really helps with your continuous improvement and showing the value of your public works department for funding and resources too when you get accredited. So congratulations to all. I know Rick had listed all our technical committees yes. there. They, you're aware of them. Um, they're great. They provide all the content for our education and credentialing programs to help support you, as well as the top five emerging technologies, which were in your January reporter that you can read about that you voted on, which is what we help focus to get that great new technologies out to all of you. So this is our last prong in, in the four areas of our strategic plan. And, and it's re really about um, not what, what I often speak about, a lot of other associations focus so much on how many members are there. And they lose sight uh, over uh, really putting effort in creating the value and the experience and our board, our staff really are focused on creating a re really great experience for all of you, as well as creating new products and services as well. Um, part, part of what we're speaking about right now is the strategy, and I'm sure over the ne next week or in breakouts, you'll speak about it. But um, I, I challenged us to look at what is the universe uh, of possible members that APWA could, might, should have? Uh, ba basically, what, what is our overall market? Um, how many of that market are currently our members? How many were once members and left? And, and trying to find out why they left. Uh, and then we're, we're also exploring new markets. We're working directly with big cities county public works directors and trying to understand what's their need. We, we've heard from them that 
you know, no, no one's ever really reached out. Uh, here, here's what we need. And we, we've had now about two and a half years working with, with them. We're also speaking with the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, uh, because all of them have public um, installations that have pu public works around the world and schools and then hospitals as well. And through that, we, we want to work with, with all of you and your chapters so we can create that local experience for them. Thanks, Scott. So chapter collaboration, I'm glad you all joined us um, for the chapter leadership training. It's great that you're all here. Um, I love seeing the comments and questions and I'll see if Ashley or Tammy will be able to summarize that and get that back out to you at some point because I see there's a lot of great interaction and questioning coming. So we we do welcome your continuous feedback. We are here for you. We are stronger together. Um, we look forward to working with you. And if there's anything you need, really, the board of directors are all accessible to you for any questions. And staff has been amazing helping switch and pivot to make sure that we could be resilient and support what you need. So we want you to have a great time, share your stories, interact, make a new friend, and we'll look forward to a great year. And stay safe, please. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to stop sharing my slides. And uh, now, now we'll turn it over to Bill Spearman, our um, immediate past president, and Stan Brown, your incoming president-elect. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, Tammy, have you got our PowerPoint you can bring up? All right. Uh, Bill and I are going to talk with you today about uh, why we serve and how we lead. That will be the, the focus of our talk. Uh, first off, I do want to echo what Mary Joyce said earlier. We thank you for stepping up and being a leader in your chapter and in your branch uh, and participating in this virtual conference. We wish we were together, but uh, this is the best we can do for now. Um, I think we had a great overview of APWA and uh, particularly of our strategic plan. Uh, what we want to talk about is just our perspective. This is not the only perspective, but it's one that Bill and I are going to talk about today for how how we can lead and why we serve um, within our association. Hopefully, you'll get some information that you can take back to your chapter and also maybe back in your, your workplace uh, and make a difference for your organization. Bill? Thank you, Stan. And I want to echo what Stan just said. And when I look over all of these smiling faces that I see, I see so many dear friends I see so many folks on this call that could be doing this presentation uh, because you are truly leaders in APWA. Uh, there's some new folks I haven't met, but uh, hopefully you will get something out of this training that we do. So we can go to the next slide, uh, Tammy. Maybe. Yes, perfect. Uh, I don't have any prizes, but does anybody know what rock band that was uh, this pictured there? <laughs> Uh, Scott, the you don't care. The monkeys. The monkeys. The monkeys. Yeah. And one of their songs was, I'm a believer. And we have to believe in our APWA mission, our vision, and our goals. Uh, that's very, very important. The Marine that you see pictured there, he's gone through the crucible, so he can finally be called a Marine. Uh, before that, he's not a Marine. He's a recruit. But he can finally be called a Marine. And so that's why the Marines don't take applications, they take commitments. So we want to believe in APWA, its mission, its goals. We also want to believe in our chapter and support our chapter. But most importantly are our members. What are we doing for our members? Because they are the life of what we do is in this association. And it's very important in our industry and in our profession because this is a service industry that we're in. We believe in helping people. You know, you saw that. Advancing the quality of life for all. Think about that. How many other organizations have that as their mission and vision? It's pretty impressive that we in this industry have decided, in this association, have decided that we want to do that. And we've proven that many, many times over, whether it's in disasters, whether it's in other situations, advancing the quality of life for all. Hey, Next Bill, I, I, Bill, I think we said a first here. This is the first time I've ever seen monkeys and Marines on the same slide. So very good there. 
Well, now you being an old Air Force guy, you probably said that at certain times. Right. Maybe, but I think we'll go to the next slide. I, I, I think that's this. a good place. You know, we've got to have passion and we've got to have excitement. You know, I like everyone else that's spoken today would be so much happier if we were together in Kansas City, even if it was five degrees or five degrees below zero. But just to be able to see you, to see the passion uh, and the excitement that you have for your work, and for your fellow citizens. That's so important. You know, tell people because we are the voice of this industry, talk it up. Talk about what we do to everybody. Somebody says, what do you do? Well, tell them what you do. Tell them those exciting stories that you have seen. It's very, very important that they know because they will get excited too because in these times, that normalcy that you bring to their lives is so, so important. Be colleagues and friends. That's one thing that I've always been very, very passionate about in our industry is to have those colleagues and friends and other departments and all, and all those you see at the elected officials now. So we'll go to the next slide. You know, her help hear a little bit about servant leadership. And when we start looking at the different levels of leadership, when it becomes service before self, very, very important. You know, you say you don't leave a soldier on the battlefield. The same thing we talk about people in public works, not leaving an injured fellow worker out there, doing whatever it takes to make sure they're there. It's also doing things with compassion. You know, we don't always understand and can't always have the same perspective as those people that are around us. Because our situation, how we grew up, where we grew up, all those things matter. But having that compassion to be able to understand. And also stewardship, that giving part of things. Because in this industry, giving is what, we, what our people do. Whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, cold, whatever else, out there working hard because they truly believe. But also humble. And I've always said that our industry is the quiet industry. As long as we're doing the jobs that we're supposed to do, whether it's designing something, building something, maintaining something, nobody ever says a word because we're hidden. It works. That's the humility in our folks. And it's always about us, never about me. And that's important in our servanthood uh, goals that we have. Traditionally, we would have been talking a lot in this conference about um, leadership per se, but not necessarily as much on chapter leaders. But you are important to the growth and uh, sustainability of your chapters. So it's always about the chapter, not about the person. Now we'll go. You know, making that difference, being that person. You know, we all have legacies, but our legacy should be in the people that follow us, not ourselves. You now, the key is we want our people that work with us very, very important that they can say, hey, we did it ourselves because we as a leader gave them the tools they needed, gave them the directions they needed the resources and other things, and they actually did the work themselves. Very, very important to be able to mentor and train these folks. And that doesn't mean a senior person is always that mentor. Many times it can be a junior person who can be that leader and mentor that can help us old folks. Maybe it's using a computer, maybe it's using a Zoom or something else, but helping us know how to do things. And also being those advocates, just like we talked about before being the advocate, telling our story, showing the importance of what we do every day. And of course, always focusing in on advancing the quality of life for all. Underline, highlighted, bold for all, because everyone is important and we need to treat, make sure that we truly understand that. Next. Now, some people serve for different reasons. There are some reasons that aren't quite there. You know, we have folks that say, oh, this is a business opportunity. I'm gonna be able to grow my business. You know, a resume builder, 
And do you have you run across people that way? Or they've punched their tickets, they've done their time. So it's their turn to be a leader. We go back to our oath of office that we take when we become leaders in APWA, whether the branch, chapter, or national levels. You know, these things are talked about. We are really focusing on the association because the association is the important thing. You know, we're there for a very short period of time. The association needs to carry on for a long time. So make sure you're serving for the right reasons. Next. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate that uh, overview of service. Uh, you know, as we talked about, you know, serving is about believing, being committed, being passionate about what you're what you're serving about our association, about APWA. You've got to have a heart for it. You've got to really want to love what we do and go out there and make a difference, but be a servant of all. You want to serve those that, that are there in your chapters, your membership. Uh, you want to serve the association. So again, it's not about me, but it's about us. We want to make that difference. As we talk about leadership, uh, you know, there are libraries out there that are full of books on leadership. You can talk about different styles of leadership, transformational leadership, transactional leadership, situational leadership. All of them have their good points. What I'm gonna to do today is just share uh, a, a very simple, what I call my five E's of leadership. And I think they will help you and guide you as you serve as a chapter leader. Um, next slide. The first one is envision. And I think with any leadership role that you, you play, whether it's uh, at work, in APWA, if it's in your church life, your sports, your civic clubs, you've got to have a vision for what you're what you're trying to get accomplished. You got to know where you're going. You got to know how you're going to get there. Uh, as a leader, you've got a responsibility for knowing that. You've got a responsibility of how you're going to communicate that to your team. And uh, in my experience, has been the best way to have a vision that people can buy into is if they are involved in developing that vision, that mission and that strategy for how to be successful. The compass there is really your guide. And I think for us as an association, that strategic plan is our guide of how we try to achieve that vision of advancing the quality of life for all. Um, you can be very effective in life, uh, you can be very efficient, but you can be so efficient sometimes that you're not effective. If you get off track from your vision, you can accomplish great things, but you're gonna miss the mark. So as a leader, it's important to have that, that vision. Next slide. All right, once you've got a vision in place, the next role that you have and responsibility as a leader is to enlist your team. Uh, you've got to get the right people on the bus, and sometimes you've got to get the right people off the bus. And that's hard work sometimes to do. We, we, we all want to be a friend to everyone. We want to work as a team, good camaraderie. But, but it's, it's also important that if you're going to cast a vision, if you're going to have a direction that you're trying to head in as a team, everyone's got to be rowing together, not in opposition to each other. So you really want to focus in on getting the right people assigned to the right task. And I, I know in your chapters, you probably have committees, uh, you have different uh, task force. You want to make sure that they're all aligned with your strategic plan. And hopefully your chapter strategic plan is in line with the association strategic plan. It should all about be about voice, value, uh, education, credentialing, and, and our members. That, that's what it's about, an advanced and quality of life for all. Team, you know, together everyone achieves more. I think that's a great acronym. It's something that keeps us, keeps us grounded and uh, realize that that's important. Next slide. All right, once you've uh, cast your vision, you've enlisted your team, you have to engage. And when we talk about engagement, really it's, it's about communicating and collaborating. Together, we're always better. You can be great as an individual, you can be great as a leader, but I think what you'll find is if you're the, the only one that's leading and no one else is following, it's a pretty lonely ride. So you definitely want everybody on the team together, working together, having a part to say in how we get things done, to have that buy-in and that can lead to success. So engage is the 30. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, the fourth E is empower. And, uh, if you've ever served in scanning, you know what that little symbol is on the left there, be prepared. You know, that is what Boy Scouts are all about. Uh, we, in, in any job, we need to be prepared. And uh, as a leader, you want to make sure that your team is prepared. So that's about organizing, training, equipping, 
your team to where they can perform in excellence. And that's what, as a leader, we want to do. We want our chapters to be successful because it's not about just a chapter. It's about the public works profession and the people that we serve and the people that we work with. Uh, the goals have to be very clear, and that comes down to expectations. Uh, you've got to be able to define what is success. If we're trying to accomplish something as a chapter, what does success look like? That's the, that's the goal we're talking about. And then ultimately, you've got to have a clean handoff. If you're going to empower people, you've got to give them authority that goes along with the responsibility to get the job done. And um, so that would be that, that n- number four on the, on the ease there. Let's go to number five. And this is the fun part. I had to get a, a couple of slides in here. Uh, Bill being from South Carolina, of course, he's got all of his bases covered in South Carolina. He uh, went to Clemson and also got his master's at uh, South Carolina. So, uh, but if you notice the guy on the left, you may be a Clemson fan, you may not be. We all come from different parts of the country. Uh, but uh, you've got to be a coach. You want to be a coach to, to lead your team. You want to inspire them. You want to motivate them, give the instructions that are needed, focus on teamwork because as a team, we can get things accomplished. I love the saying that teamwork makes the dream work. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, As a coach, you've got to follow up. You've got to remediate where needed. You've got to redirect. Uh, Sometimes you've got to change the game plan. But uh, part of uh, being a leader is being an encourager as a coach. And the other one, the one on the right, I've got to get my Georgia uh, background in, and that's, uh, that's UGG. The University of Georgia, I think the last national championship was back in 1980. They have this thing called Alabama that they have a real problem getting past. But, uh, but that UGG right there, the, the mascot for the Georgia Bulldogs, he has been named number one. Uh, a few years ago, Sports Illustrated identified him as the number one mascot in the United States. So had to get him in the picture. But the reason I've got him there is cheerleader. As an encourager, you want to cheer your team on. You want to be the champion for them. You want to recognize successes. You want to show support. You want to encourage. And you also want to celebrate the successes. A lot of times we don't take the opportunity to to really uh, reward those that have done great work. Uh, But we need to do that. That's part of being a leader is to, to show those and generally, it's more the intrinsic rewards, the, the pat on the back, the recognition, not necessarily like we see on a job where we think it has to be all about pay. There's a lot of other ways that we can reward our folks and the show. And the main thing is to show you care about them and that you're there for them, that you advocate for them, and you make a difference. So uh, next slide. Okay. Talked about the five E's of, uh, of, of how we lead. But the, the bottom line is trust. It's kind of like an apple pie. You can have a crust, you can have all the ingredients, but if you don't have any apples, you don't have much of an apple pie. It'd be a pretty good pie, but it won't have the apples. Same thing with trust. You can have all those things about envision, enlisting, uh, engaging, empowering, and, and encouraging, but you've got to have the trust. If people trust you, they will follow you. And if they don't trust you, they won't follow you. And uh, the way you become trusted is you have to be trustworthy. And I think that is really something you have to do with integrity. Walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Be committed. You know, I, I love that. I often heard about the ABCs, you know, that uh, when you talk about uh, a, a parachute, you're going to jump out of a parachute. You, the A is you can acknowledge that that parachute is, is a tool that can save your life if you jump out of an airplane. Uh, the, the B is you can believe it. You can believe that if you open that parachute, it's going to give you a nice ride down. But C is the commitment. You know, you can believe it all day, but when you strap that thing on, you jump out of the airplane, you're truly committed there. So you've got to show that commitment. You've got to be there. You've got to make it happen. You've got to trust and, and, and believe in what you're doing. And if you do that, people will follow you. People, if they trust you, they'll follow you sometimes just out of curiosity to see where you're going. But that's okay, because you want to be able to inspire, motivate it, and make it, make it happen. And also a good thing about trust is that it's about having people's back. You've got to be willing to pick them up before they fall. And uh, so trust is something that I can't overemphasize. Next slide. Yeah. yeah okay, just so we're wrapping it up. Uh, go ahead, Bill. 
Well, I was just going to say, you've just really hit some very good highlights there and really given us some things to think about. Uh, you know, I've always considered leaders to be bridge builders. Uh, they bridge different groups uh, within an organization and outside an organization. And here we are in, uh, in our organization, in our association, many of our folks are truly our bridge builders. And there's stories that are told of a, a person that was on a journey and actually came to a problem. He went through it, no problems. And another person said, well, why did you stop then and build a bridge? He said, because someone after me was going to have a problem there. So we in this industry, doesn't matter whether you're on the front lines or in a supervisor role, a consultant or a vendor, we're building bridges every day to make lives better for our citizens and for our association. So I just want to thank you for what you do every day. With it because you don't always get the thanks you need. But you know, it's been this is a wonderful experience in this association. And just take advantage of the opportunities. Ask for assignments. Raise your hand. Say, give me something to do. And somebody will. And you'll definitely be better for it because the association in this industry has given us more than we can ever return. So it's just a chance to give back. Thank you. And at this point, we'll turn it back over to Scott or Tammy. I'm not sure who has the stick, but we'll give it over to you. I think Tammy, that, I think, is up, right, Tammy? I think that was a very clean handoff. Yes. Okay. We uh, go with the key. Some great, powerful messages um, from Stan Brown and Bill Spearman, and I appreciate all the work you do to help all the work we do. For those of you who don't know me, my, let me introduce myself. My name is Tammy Bennett. I am the Director of Membership and Engagement. Ashley Wilson is our Associate Director of Membership and Engagement. Ashley, can you say something so you pop up on the screen and they can get a good visual? Yeah, hello guys. Happy to have all of you here with us today. Thanks for attending. Did you notice that she's wearing red? There, there is a reason why some of us in Kansas City are wearing red. <laughs> Absolutely. The Chiefs. So I, right. I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to do some breakout rooms. Um, and if you have connected by computer, but you've dialed in separately, your audio and video could be separated in the next section, which means you'd be in two different rooms. And to avoid that, go to your unmute button. There's a carrot. Select switch to phone audio. It should give you a phone connection number and most importantly, a participant ID. And when you come back, if, when you enter that participant ID, when you call back in, it will marry up your audio and your visual. Now for the real stuff. Um, we know that getting to know other chapter leaders is the most valuable part of chapter leader training. And we may be virtual, but we wanna maintain this value. For the next two sections, we will use breakout rooms for the purpose of making connections with other leaders, developing resources and sharing ideas. We encourage you to put yourself out there a little bit. In the virtual world, we have to be intentional about connecting with other people. You will get out of this what you're willing to put into this. Each room will have probably about seven to 10 people. Um, we'll be in there for 15 minutes. So if you will grab a copy of the shared document link that Ashley will put in the chat. Now I can't see the chat, so will somebody nod if she's got that out there? Shared document link out there. No, okay, good, there we go, I got, I got a nod. Very good. Um, know what room you're in. Pick a scribe to write for your room. Please select a moderator. And if you happen to have a staff person in your room, they cannot be your moderator, but they could be your scribe if you want. I'm gonna share my screen again, I think. Hold on, I got I have a lot of buttons. And real quick, once you get this done, we might have to give access to that document, that shared document. It's not a public document, I guess. It's not? No, that's what we're finding out right now. Let me see if I can change that real quick, though. Okay. You work on that, and I will, um, I'll just quickly go over the questions that we have. These are guiding questions. So, like I said, you need to make these sessions work for you.